Hi, welcome back. Rob Bryanton here with the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. It's December 22nd, 2007. Today's video blog uh, entry is called You Can't Get There From Here. And it goes like this. One of the things people like about this way of imagining the dimensions is that it shows how the higher dimensions are the same as the lower ones, and how each dimension that is added follows the same logical hierarchy. While there's no question that our particular vantage point within the dimensions, as 3D creatures traveling down a 4D line of time, gives those other dimensions their defining characteristics, that has more to do with our unique point of view than it does with the idea that the higher dimensions are not to be thought of in the same way as the lower. For our reality, there are two things that seem locked in. 3D space is the most obvious one, and some people believe that that, that, that is the only thing that is real, even to the extent of dim dismissing the first and second dimension as being impossible to conceive of outside of their participation within 3D. The other locked-in aspect to our reality is the basic physical laws, or fine structure constants as they're sometimes referred to. String theorists are saying that our reality is created by the interactions of a 3D brain with a 7D brain, which is interesting to me because in the way of imagining reality we're exploring here, the seventh dimension would be where the basic physical laws of our universe are locked in. There are many ways I've described how each dimension relates to the others. This time, we're going to use the idea of, you can't get there from here. The full statement of this idea would be, you can't get there from here without moving through the next dimension up, which isn't quite as catchy and doesn't even have a pronounceable acronym. Uh, YCGTFHW, Yakagat Fumet Tindu, I guess. Uh, probably not. The basic idea for dimensions is that they should be able to be represented on a graph. That is easy to visualize for the lower dimensions, but for our 3D minds, it becomes more and more as abstract with each dimension we add. So representing a 2D system with values for X and Y is easy to do on graph paper. Representing a 3D system with values for X, Y, and Z, or Z if you're in the States, with a 3D graph is still something we can easily get our minds around. Representing a seven-dimensional graph, though, with values for T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, is not something our brains are wired for, but the concept remains the same. Each additional dimension must add an additional degree of freedom for what is being represented, or it isn't a new dimension. Another way of saying this, then, is you can't get there from here. Let's work through each dimension and see how that idea applies. We'll start with a one-dimensional line. How do we get to a different one-dimensional line? You can't get there from here without moving through the second dimension. Now we're on a 2D plane. How do we get to a different 2D plane? Well, you can't get there from here without moving through the third dimension. Now we're in a 3D space. Regardless of whether you believe that time is the next dimension up or just a quality that's overlaid on 3D space to create space-time, it's still clear that if we want to get to a different 3D space, the one where your arm is up rather than your arm is down, as a very simple example, you have to move through time to get there. By accepting that time really is the fourth dimension, you can see how the metaphor continues. You can't get from one 3D space to another without moving through the next dimension up. At this point, those who believe time is not a full spatial dimension will say things stop making sense. If everything that follows from here didn't also have so many other strong connections to what we know about our reality, I believe their arguments would hold more weight. But still, to be fair to those critics, I'll pause here and acknowledge that some people do not believe that time is a full spatial dimension which we, as 3D creatures, built from chemical processes that obey the thermodynamic laws of entropy, are experiencing in a uniquely limited way. <laughs> still with me? Then let's proceed. Now we're in a 4D timeline. Let's say it's exactly noon right now, and as per the example I just gave, I've just raised my right arm. How do I get to the version of that 4D timeline where it's noon and I didn't raise my arm? Well, that's impossible. If it's noon, I've either raised my arm or I haven't. End of story. So what other version reality is now on the you can't get there list from our 3D reality? And that is, I have to move through the fifth dimension. The fifth dimension is something I've been referring to as probability space. I believe 
It's also directly connected to what David Deutsch's team at Oxford have proven, the bush-like branching structure of possible outcomes that exist at both the quantum and the macro level are, as I've always proposed with this project, directly equivalent. The fifth dimension where would, would be where quantum fields can be simultaneously perceived as waves and particles, and where it could be noon and I would simultaneously have raised and not raised my arm. I think it's interesting that Kaluitz approved and Einstein eventually agreed that the field equations for gravity and light work out in the fifth dimension, and that string theorists have said that the fifth dimension is invisible to us because it's curled up down at the Planck length, because that's what I'm proposing here as well. Our 4D line of time is being created one unit of Planck time after the next, from the available choices of the fifth dimensional probability space that we're twisting and turning within. Our space-time is being created from the fifth dimension. So what's on the you can't get there from here list for our version of the fifth dimension then? As freewheeling as the fifth dimension might sound, it's still a probability space and the reason the next available choice for our 4D line of time doesn't suddenly move us to some other completely different version of our universe where the moon is no longer in the sky or I'm circling Mars is because there are only certain states available to us within the probability space of the fifth dimension. So no matter how much I exercise my free will of putting my arm up and putting my arm down at noon today, the bush-like branching structure of available fifth dimensional choices for noon today don't include the version of reality where 9-11 didn't happen or dinosaur, dinosaurs aren't extinct. You can't get there from here unless you move through the sixth dimension. So now we're in the sixth dimension where every choice made and not made can exist simultaneously. Even the ones that were not available from our position within the probability space of the fifth dimension. Surely this is as far as we need to go. What's next on the you can't get there from here list? This is where those fine structure constants come in. No amount of quantum indeterminacy choice or probability within our sixth dimensional frame allows us to move to a universe where our basic physical laws are different. To move to one of those universes then requires us to move through the seventh dimension. Welcome to the seventh dimension. Now we're moving from one universe to another, each universe having its own unique value for gravity, its own value for the speed of light, its own values for its fine structure constants. Each point in the seventh dimension contains within it its own unique version of the dimensions below, from the sixth down to the first. Those six dimensions, when you're within them, would seem just as real as our own, but no amount of quantum indeterminacy or choice would ever allow matter or energy from those other universes to interact with our own, or any of the other universes out there in the multiverse. Because of that basic, you can't get there from here rule. Physicists call this decoherence, and that's the same concept. And again, the idea that part of our universe is constrained within a 7D brain seems like a very interesting tie in here. What's left to imagine now? How about universes that don't rely upon one specific value for all those fine structure constants? Those would be impossible to get to without entering the eighth dimension. And how would we move from one of those incredibly strange and most unlikely unstable universes to another? By moving through the ninth dimension. Now it may seem that I'm moving too fast here at the end or trying to skip past some of the higher dimensions. Other ways of imagining the higher dimensions do indeed seem easier to follow when you start from the tenth and work your way down to the first. But that's not the concept we're playing with here right now. So let's continue. What could be on the you can't get there from here list for the ninth dimension? By now We've included all possible universes, all possible expressions of matter and energy, all, all possible ways of ignore, er, sorry, of organizing the information equals reality concept from quantum physics that I've talked about in this blog many times now. So the only thing that's left is the singularity, the unfolded whole, where we, we perceive absolutely every possible state simultaneously. That's the only thing you can't get to from the ninth dimension without entering the tenth dimension. This is the timelessness that Gavin Gjorbrand describes so well. This is the unobserved quantum fields that physicists tell us our reality springs from. Attempting to observe absolutely any aspect of those fields immediately pops us out of that overall indeterminate state and into at least some part of the dimensions below. For a version of imagining the dimensions that starts from the tenth and works its way down to the first dimension, that's a whole different blog entry, and uh, one of those is called How to Make a Universe. If you type that phrase in quotes into Google, you should uh, be able to find that entry fairly quickly.
So uh, that's all for today. Uh, I'd like to finish off with a song now that uh, takes that idea of the uh, you can't get there from here and puts it back into uh, the things that we can relate to. The song is called What Was Done Today and that's all for now from Rob Bryanton and Imagining the Tenth Dimension. All the tiny little hurts All the sad little tears All the wounds that turn to scars That never went away All the evil in the world All the bad turns of fate All the ignorance and sloth That never let things change They steal something precious They open up a hole in the lines of possibility To keep us from our goals They steal something precious I see it train away Tomorrow's that can never be Because of what was done today Now if all things are possible It still must be clear Because of chance or circumstance Sometimes you can't get there from here And it's nice to have your wishes And it's great to have your dreams But for a starving child in Africa They hardly mean a thing How can they mean a thing? Tiny spark that drives us to continue and to fight against the dark. But they're stealing something precious. I see it drain away. Tomorrow's that can never be because of what was done today.